Hey everybody, this is another tech demo time. Um, so th I've gotten the auto crafting working for the warhead station. I'll be working on the uh, missile here a bit later. It's going to have a little bit more work, so I'm saving it for last. Uh, but let's go ahead and get this set up here. So you just when you go to do the the warhead crafting, for one you don't have to use a setup. There you could use a little bit more complicated setups that would result in a, a less compact mess that I've got. Uh, one, you want to make sure you have three arm bots inputting and one on output. You then want to feed items right now. Because of there's no filtering system right now and there's no real advanced logic, you're going to need one input per object you're inputting. You then want to also go in and go to the automation tab on here, enable the auto crafting, make sure these are checked. These are going to control uh, if it uses an explosive or trigger or not. Uh, I'll be adding a little bit better detail version uh, detail to this so it's a little easier to understand and these are going to end up being checkboxes. That's the reason why they look like X's because it resembles easily a checkbox that people are familiar with. Um, but it will say when it says enable that means it's disabled so you'll have to enable the device. Uh, I'll probably add some status feedback here. The auto crafters will not even remotely interact with the workstation if auto crafting is not enabled. This is to prevent it from doing other things. Um, you can also change your explosives you want to use. So say we want to use three explosives. The, I believe this warhead can hold five. Um, if it's larger than the warhead size, it'll use the warhead size as a preferred size. Um, and the other tabs right here are not implemented yet. The trigger tab is partially implemented. I'm going to be working on it here later. And the explosive tab, there's not even settings for the explosives right now. So you don't need to worry about it. But that's all you got to do with this. Once you've got that, you just need to toss your materials in the chest. Uh, let me upgrade the speed on this. Uh, the armbots do have a speed setting. I am working on this. Uh, this will not be redstone forever, but you can get the speed up really high. And let's get these all the way up to why we're at it. This is probably the fastest they'll ever go. I don't want to make them too fast. But as you can tell, it's uh, been crafting. If I go ahead and upgrade this one, we can actually see it work a little faster. I see, there we go, auto crafting warheads. Now, when the missile station is implemented, um, you'll be able to just attach this down the road. Uh, the station also comes with the ability, there's a reason why there's extra tabs for this. So if I go ahead and grab this, uh, we want to output this way. So if you go in here and say you disable the re trigger, trigger requirement, what you can in theory do, instead of doing as complicated as I've got mine set up to be, you can make yours a little better compact so you can see the workstation tables. And then you could, in theory, just implement your system like this. And then you would have your input, output, everything like that. So let's go ahead and I'm going to test this. I haven't tested the multi-chaining just yet, so there's a chance this will fail. So let me go ahead and, uh, wait, let's not steal all the items from the other crafter. So let's grab some new items here. So let's grab some more empty warheads. Um, let's grab an antimatter explosive. Uh, we'll have to grab some more of these than that because the stack size high. I've already got triggers in my inventory, so that's perfect. So how you would preferably want to do this is you would want to input your warheads from one side and put your explosives from another side. And you would want to input your triggers last. Always remember to input the triggers last. Uh, this is going to be more important later. There's no code right now for this. But when you're assembling all of your stuff... If you put a trigger on something and that trigger goes live and then you say throw it on a conveyor belt and it rolls around the conveyor belt then hits a wall, it will detonate. Um, so that's just something I want to point out there real quick. So once again, I have to go here, enable auto crafting. Uh, this should, in theory, ignore, yeah, it ignores the trigger requirement. Then we want to go over to this one and we want to set it to ignore the explosive and require the trigger and enable. And what that'll do is that should install the trigger in here. And when I say should is uh, I probably have to work on the crafting some more. Um, before today, the, the Warhead crafting was not set up to do the triggers. I just coded the triggers today and got them all ready. Um, so <laughs> there are bugs. As you can tell, there's a bug right there. Uh, this actually has to do with the fact that the Warheads are counted as explosives. So when we go to do Mervs here later, you could craft Mervs right out of here. And Mervs will basically be you'll be putting a whole bunch of small warheads in a large one. 
Um, so I'll have to fix this later, but it does show that the concept does work. You can insert in here, and it will eventually get down to this side. The only reason it's not working right now is i got to adjust maybe two or three lines of code, but that's this so far. Um, these will be released here later today. Um, probably really late. Probably even um, slightly in the morning on Saturday. But they're basically done. I just have to do some polish, and that's basically it. I'll have some more videos for you guys here later.